Welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Has the way that love has arisen in you seemed out of place or even taboo? My mission is to expand the conversation of love in the world. Is it possible to have deep, loving, healthy relationships? Have you ever been curious about having more than one relationship or partner at a time? Get ready to transform in love. Be courageous and set yourself free. In this show, we talk about relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. I sh- All right, welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love. And today we are talking about experiencing intense pleasure. Oh, so yummy that we get to have these conversations every single week. But before we get into that and introduce our phenomenal guest for today, a reminder that the Elizabeth Cunningham Show is live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on the Transformation Network Facebook page and then is aired on YouTube and most podcast platforms every single Thursday. All links for everything that I just said are in the show notes. So scroll down and pick your favorite platform and hit the subscribe or notification button so you never miss an episode. All right. So on today's episode, we will be talking with Wendy Perkins about experiencing intense pleasure. Wendy Perkins is an orgasm and neuro pleasure coach that specializes in biohacking the nervous system to increase pleasure. A self-proclaimed nerd with ADHD, Wendy has mastered the art of hyper-focusing to learn about the human body and how everything works. She believes that everyone deserves to experience maximum pleasure and orgasmic bliss, and she works tirelessly to help people achieve this goal. Hello, Wendy. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Anytime I can talk about pleasure is a great day. (laughs) I, I feel the exact same way. I'm just like, all right, sweet. We're going to talk about pleasure for an hour. Fantastic. I'm so ready for it. Yes, exactly. Um, so in introducing this topic, um, uh, there's a couple things that I, uh, you know, just setting, setting the ground for it for like, okay, pleasure is this like huge umbrella, right? Um, mm-hmm. so uh, we're talking about, uh, like some of the things that you talk about are um, biohacking the nervous system, like to increase pleasure. What does that mean? What do you mean biohacking the nervous system to increase pleasure? Okay. So basically, long story short about the human body, how it works is our body is a physical representation of our nervous system. A lot of people think that our diagnosis is or where everything start, but it actually starts from the nervous system and then goes out. And this has become really clear in the last 20 years of research and how the body works. And a few years ago, when I started becoming, almost five years ago now, when I started becoming an orgasm coach, I was all about just fast tracking to pleasure. <laughs> I wanted to like stay away from the nervous system as much as possible because that meant stress and trauma. And I did not want to do anything about it. So I started figuring out ways to fast track that process of healing. And that was kind of my mission and how I got started. So over time, obviously things evolve because you learn more and get more experience and help more people and discover more things. So that's where I come from. It's it was really about how quickly I can get people to orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of people would agree with you on that one. <laughs> it's like talking about, um, well, I guess a lot of people, some people like the extended, extended pleasure, right? Yeah. Like don't have to orgasm right away. But I feel like quite a few people are like, oh my God, how fast can we orgasm? So that makes sense. That checks out. Yeah. And, you know, with that being said, it wasn't necessarily about quick, quick, quick orgasm. It was a lot of people were coming to me because they couldn't get out of their head while they were 
mm-hmm. having sex. They had too many wandering thoughts and couldn't really get focused and be able to orgasm. So it was about fast tracking that process, like how to get them out of their head and back mm-hmm. into their body so they could experience the pleasure, however long that may be. <laughs> right. So what did you, what are some of the things that you discovered in this process of how do you get out of your head and, and get into your body and be able to have amazing orgasms? So number one, most people are very disconnected from their body. Our past experiences have led us to states of dissociating. Um, I know really technical terms, but how it shows up in everyday life, scrolling mindlessly on social media, binge watching, you know, Netflix or any variety of things that you do where you're not thinking about it and you're basically not present in your body and you're just mindlessly focused on something outside of yourself. And so with that, people don't have the experience of being present with their emotions and even with, or with their thoughts. Sometimes their thoughts are going crazy, but they Mm -hmm. don't have any experience with actually stopping to take a, to take a moment to step back and think about their thoughts, (laughs) right? Like observe their thoughts, right? And so part of it was learning, okay, how can I fast track people getting into their body and how can I help people learn how to step into that observer role instead of reactionary role? And Mm -hmm. since it's all in the nervous system, there are ways to actually shortcut it. One of the simplest ways is just through breathing. Most people do not know how to breathe correctly because we sit in desks as kids at school and we start learning how to breathe incorrectly because of mm-hmm. sitting for so long or in pictures, like we suck in our stomach, you know, to make us look better. And that all goes against the way our natural breath is supposed to be. And that causes stress on your nervous system, which mm-hmm. could impact your ability to orgasm. Wow. I right. actually had, I mean, it's so interesting. I'm just thinking about like my own training and like what I know about breathing and how, like how that impacts your breath but you just said so succinctly how breathing just even from a young age and how we train ourselves to (laughs) not breathe properly and the actual impact that that has because like you think about it and you're like oh yeah that makes sense you know if you don't breathe properly then that's going to have a serious impact on you Um, but like actually thinking about it as a lived experience of like, but how does it impact you? And one of those ways being that you don't have, you don't have orgasms or it's hard to orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. Most, so most of my clients all orgasm. I'm not saying they all do. I do have people who come to me who've never been able to orgasm and then they do, (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but most of my clients have orgasms and then orgasming, you know, many of them from a very young age, but they are more, I mostly work with women. And so they're mostly, you know, from clitoral stimulation, either by their hands or a vibrator, and they are, have never been able to experience a internal orgasm Mm -hmm. and that an internal orgasm absolutely requires a, a good flow of energy through your nervous system. And that's impacted by your breath. Mm, okay. So, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's really brilliant. And so how does trauma come into play or how does the, the, the ways in which, you know, your nervous system is impacted? Cause you talk about not breathing and not, not learning how to breathe properly, but you also mentioned at the beginning, um, experiencing trauma and that a lot of trauma happens in the nervous system. So t- tell right. us a little bit more about that. So trauma in simple terms is unresolved stress. Every time you get stressed and by stress, I mean, anytime you have to take action, that's uncertain. So stress could actually be a good thing or a bad thing. For example, you could be showing, getting ready to go out at night, you know, with your friends and have no idea what's in store for the evening. That's Mm -hmm. uncertain. So that stress and that excitement is a good thing. And then of course, there's the bad stress that we all (laughs) too well. Right. And that is 
what, anytime that happens, anytime a stressful situation comes up, there's a whole bunch of chemical reactions that happen in your body that creates energy. And if you learn from science class, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just has to move through. And humans, unfortunately, over the last you know few thousand years have developed these societal practices that keep us from relieving our stress. And we usually don't feel comfortable letting the energy flow through our body. And so we hold it all in and that has to go somewhere. It doesn't just disappear mm -hmm. and it gets stuck in your body in primarily in your fascia. And that is actually what trauma is. And so that, that stuck energy in your fascia impacts your nervous system and the flow of the energy of your nervous system. Wow. And then how long can it stay there? Forever. Forever. <laughs> like it won't just, Forever. Like I guess my question is like, can, can it be resolved like over time? Like if you don't do anything, let's, let's say you don't do anything about it at all. Can it get resolved okay. over time? So it's, it's at the most simplest terms, it's energy, right? Mm -hmm. You can, if you're doing things like exercising, but not so much where you're causing more stress. So you're not releasing, like there has to be a, you're releasing more stress than you're creating <laughs> Right. Um, right. things of that nature. You're getting enough sleep because you actually do release some of the energy during the sleep cycle. Um, good breathing. Say you're taking breath work courses, you're doing yoga. You're, you're doing some of the activities that will move that energy through your body. It mm -hmm. will release. The problem is most people are not doing the kinds of activities that release the energy mm -hmm. and they're just adding more on and adding more on. And so the energy has to go somewhere. So that's what actually impacts your body system. This is what causes inflammation in all different areas in your body. It's it stress, stress and trauma doesn't stay in one area. It stays in the area that it gets stuck in, if that makes sense any sense at all. <laughs> yeah. No, what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is that, well, ac actually what I'm hearing you say that you actually, I don't know if you actually said was that we're actually taking on more stress than we're processing. And yes. so, yes, we're, you know, generally doing activities that may release stress, but we're actually, we have like a buildup of stress. Yes. Right. And especially since we've been gaining stress, since we've been like little kids, especially like if you have a traumatic past, which we'll get into that, I'm going to ask you questions about that for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, but that we have this like buildup of stress. And so uh, even though we may be doing activities to release that, that it's actually probably not enough. That's what I'm hearing yes. you say. Yes. In general, it's not enough. Like <laughs> it's very rare that I come across well, most people aren't who are coming to me are not are are having issues because they haven't figured out how to get that balance of mm -hmm. releasing the energy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who have figured it out and they're probably pretty stress free. But one of the one of the most simple things, as I said, is breath. But even just like shaking and moving in your body yeah. is getting rid of that energy. Yeah. That's where I was saying our societal expectations usually don't allow us to move that energy. So a lot of times kids are fidgeting, you know, mm -hmm. because they're, you know, they're fidgeting in class and they're told sit still, sit still, sit still. And mm -hmm. actually that whole fidgeting process is a natural release of the stored energy, the stress of the environment of having to focus and pay attention. And instead now they're learning how to hold that in. And most people, you know, are in lots of environments where it's not, not necessarily socially acceptable to just start randomly shaking and moving your body. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, no, that's, that's a beautiful explanation. And also like, again, how it really impacts you. Okay. We're going to take a really quick break. Um, yeah. but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more, get into more depth of, yeah. How does this show up? And, and even ask the question, like, even if you haven't had like a super traumatic past, like, what does that even mean for you as well? All right. So we'll be right back. All right. Welcome back from the break. Uh, we are at the Elizabeth Cunningham show. That's where you're at right now. If you're watching, if you're listening, courageously expanding love. And we are talking to Wendy Perkins about 
pleasure and intense pleasure and how you use your nervous system to access pleasure and now on our on our current segment um uh, talking about okay but your nervous system stores trauma. And that's what we are starting to talk about is like how your nervous system builds stress over time, starting when when you were like a little kid sitting in a chair in a classroom, being told to not fidget and sit still and holding that stress in your body. I really love that example actually of like how as a society, we don't um, allow people to move our bodies, right? Like it's, I, I don't know, that's, wild to me um but like so I know that sometimes when we say the word trauma people think oh my gosh like a terrible thing happened to you and we do mean that but we also mean other types of trauma so share a little bit more about like other other types of trauma as well or or what people may experience as trauma right so this is why I think it's really important to understand that trauma is just, I say just like, like it's no, no big deal. I don't mean that. Yeah. Uh, but trauma is a buildup of stress. And so depending on the intensity of the stress and how long it, you know, how long it goes on, if it's repeated stress over and over and over again, it's going to have these impacts or if it's super, you know, a big traumatic event and very impactful and very emotional and and causes a whole bunch of chaos in your um in your basically in your nervous system mm-hmm. um it's going to have an impact because as much energy as you create you have to release so mm-hmm. even small simple stresses of daily life can be super impactful and i find that a lot of the people who have big traumatic events, you know, like the capital T trauma that we can, we could all probably name, you know, more than we would like to, um, they know they have trauma. They know that the trauma has been holding them back because there's more to it than just stress. Whereas the people who are like, oh, I haven't had, I haven't had a traumatic life. All my life has been easy or all these different, you know, thoughts that they have. Mm-hmm. Once you start talking to them and breaking it down, they live underneath a lot of stress and it's that repeated stress that doesn't get released that creates the trauma in your nervous system. So it's almost irrelevant how the trauma gets there, whether it's a big capital T event kind of trauma or sustained trauma or sustained stress. It all shows up physically the same way. No, that's, I think that that's really, really important to note is that your, yeah, your nervous system is going to store that trauma regardless of how it gets there. And so I, and I, and, you know, kind of that imposter syndrome comes in, right? Like, oh, who am I to, who am I to like complain? Like I'm from the Midwest. My Mm -hmm. mom says things like, ah, even if I did complain, who would listen to me? Right. And, but it's just, it's that attitude. Right. And I, and let's be clear, like, I love my mom. I feel like I use my mom as examples of like this Midwestern person and like, she's an amazing human being. Like, let's just be clear. Um, But it is those examples of like, oh yeah. Like if I complain, who would listen to me? Oh, nothing terrible has happened to me. So I'm fine. Like the, the dreaded I'm fine. Um, And, uh, and really allowing yourself to look at the stress that you've had in your life and allowing that to be real. Like, that's okay that you've experienced stress and being able to like actually look at it because I think we do have this idea that like, it needs to be this like terrible thing that happened to us or like this big event or like this long extent, like, you know, being in an incredibly abusive relationship for like five years or 10 years or 20 years. Um, when it really is that we are, we all are just building stress over time because I, I personally, you said earlier, you were like, oh, like people who are able to like have stress-free lives. I was like, I don't know anybody who has a stress-free life. I have never said it. Who does? Like I've never met anyone who's like, I have zero stress in my life. I'd be like, really? Are you, 
okay I, yeah. I won't believe you <laughs> kind of but uh, yeah my opinion on someone who says they have basically a stress-free life is either they are of become fully enlightened and mastered all of the physical laws of this realm or they're completely dissociated from the reality of their existence there's there's really no other way <laughs> yeah and i and i but we are as you said you know we are taught to disassociate from that right yeah. and it's actually a biological function and so this is something that has become very clear to me over the past couple of years in particular, really getting in and starting to explain to people what is happening into their body when they're stressed and they start understanding this process of there's only so much energy that your body has at any given time to handle a situation. So your brain will start reducing function in order to use energy to get you out of the stressful situation. So people who experience prolonged stress are actually the most prone to being completely dissociated or not, it's never completely from being dissociated from their body, but they have no idea because the way the process is, it's kind of like the brain just starts turning down the volume and it doesn't just turn it off because then you would notice. It's just the slow turning down of sensations and of connection to yourself to the point where you are disconnected, but you don't know because it was such a gradual process. Mm -hmm. Like the, that um, thing about the frog in the, you know, the pan, yeah. like if you just slowly start turning it up, it doesn't even realize it's boiling. It's right. that same concept of what's happening in your body. You're storing, like think about, you know, the pot is like your stress, like you, you are building, building, building stress up, but it's coming in so gradually and your brain is just turning off sensation. So you don't notice it. And we start, we ignore pain. We push through pain. We ignore our thoughts. We ignore our feelings. We ignore our emotions. We push them aside. We don't deal with them. And every time we do that, the brain has to then turn off different, um, usually in the sensory, uh, sensory system will turn off sensation there so, yeah so people yeah. have numb areas and have no idea that's so fascinating because as you were saying that I was also thinking of things that you hear just on a regular basis like you know push through the pain like that is you know that's absolutely a thing push through the pain um uh, like don't share about your emotions. Like no one cares about your emotions or your emotions make you weak or like, yeah, just, I mean, all of you, you were talking about the societal practices that we have that have our nervous system start to increase stress and trauma and start to also <laughs> increase that disassociation and that like slow brain turn off. But I'm hearing all of those um, phrases as you- yeah as you're sharing that as well. So what then, so you have, you have people that come to you, they have, um, they, th this is their experience. They have experience of like disassociation or numbness or like a lack of pleasure. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. The, yeah. the biggest issue is they don't know they're dissociated and mm -hmm. numb. They mm -hmm. have no idea because they're numb. They don't know that they're numb and it's not, as I said, it's not like a hundred percent turn off. It's just you're turned down so that it's blocked. So you can't experience your full height of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so you, you need some, so then you do need something like a vibrator to be able to get you that intensity, to be able to break through that numbness that you're experiencing. You just don't even realize that that's what's happening. Wow. Right. I feel like this is so relatable yeah <laughs> for a lot of people I'm like oh my gosh this is so relatable okay so uh, this is how people ex like this is how it happens this is how like this is where we get to in like the ick this is the, uh, this is what I call the ick right yeah um this is the ick 
Uh, and we're actually going to take another break and we're going to give ourselves some relief from the egg. Ooh, let's come into the pleasure part when we come back on break. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, we're going to go on a break. <laughs> and when we come back, let's talk about pleasure. All right. Welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham show, courageously expanding love. And we are talking to Wendy Perkins about pleasure and biohacking your nervous system so that you can experience a fuller range of pleasure. And one of the things that we've been covering in this episode is how your body stores trauma and how we all have like at least low level trauma and that we uh, just get numb and we don't realize that we get numb because it's that slow, slow turn off, right? Mm -hmm. That slow, right. slow wind down. And so all of a sudden it's just like, it just becomes our normal lived experience. And we don't realize that there's this entire world of pleasure that we're actually missing out on. And so now we're going to talk about the world we're missing out on, which is pleasure. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm just like a kid in a candy shop right now. I'm like, okay, tell me, talk to me, talk to me about pleasure, Wendy. Um, so you, pleasure is, is we're actually wired, you know, the whole nervous system thing. We are actually wired to either move towards pain or move towards pleasure mm -hmm. and the cool thing about once you start really developing your own pleasure practices, and this can look so different for every person, it's going to be unique to you and what lights you up. But as you start moving towards pleasure, your brain will actually start wanting to wire and keep moving more and more and more to pleasure. So and sadly, people don't realize the best way to start experiencing pleasure is to just try. It doesn't even have to be, you know, doing it perfectly because that's a whole nother issue. <laughs> People are always trying to be perfectionists and right. I have to figure it have, out exactly. But I have to do it the right way. Wendy, I have to do it the right way though. <laughs> Tell me the right way to do it. <laughs> exactly. I, I, yep. That's exactly what people do. And the, the key is to just start playing and being curious because when you're curious, actually changes the different brain structures that are being activated mm -hmm. from you know, most people are living in heightened anxiety, stress, you know, depression, all these other modalities instead of in these pleasurable states. But the easiest way to actually start bringing pleasure into your life is to start being curious. And one of the ways I recommend doing it is even maybe being curious about where you might be experiencing numbness. Just even being able to go in and start having this direction of like, oh, let me see, where am I numb? Can I feel this? Can I not feel that? And going, and especially for, for females, going in to yourself using your fingers or a dildo and going in and finding what areas inside are numb. Can you actually feel every single, you know, centimeter of your, of your, of your yoni? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that sounds beautiful and terrifying. Like I, uh, I'm reminded of a woman that I know who's actually now like a master coach of eroticism. Like she's one of the women that I've trained with. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, her origin story was that she didn't even want to touch herself. She didn't, she yep. didn't want to touch her vulva. She definitely didn't want to like finger inside of her vagina at all. Um, right. And so like start, I, I guess one of the things that I want to say is just start where you start. But the other thing is like, yeah, like what if you don't like, even if you're like, okay, be curious, but like, I don't even know like where to start. So when I work, you know, Right now I, I was speaking from a, like an overall standpoint, like this is, this is the ideal place, right? <laughs> um, but I know everyone does have their past histories and in particular for people who are not yet comfortable with their own skin and I, you need to start with the skin, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't go deep 
until you've started really getting comfortable on the surface. And so I will actually tell people to start, you know, paying attention by themselves. Like, what do you actually like? What part of your skin on the outside do you like to be touched? Is it right here behind the ear? Or is it down the neck? Is it, you know, caressing the side of your breast or going down your side? Like, where's the most sensitive areas that feel the best and what kind of speed and what kind of pressure and really start playing with that and being curious, right? Like, mm -hmm. well, I, I've had a guy kiss me on the back of the neck and I've had another girl, you know, kiss the side of my breast. Yes, I'm bisexual. <laughs> uh, I was like, and I like them both, but which one did I actually like more, right? So going in and playing around with yourself and like really stopping to be curious and see what parts of my body feel good and what parts mm -hmm. don't feel good. And, you know, does it actually feel really good when you, you know, slowly move your fingertips across your belly, but then the thought of someone else touching your belly terrifies you, right? that's a that's a big thing to be aware of because then every feeling emotion pain all of those things that we we're supposed to push through shove away put down are all signals to ourselves about an area of our body that wants to be healed and that is the stress and trauma actually trying to come up and resolve itself because one of the amazing things about the human body is that it actually wants to get into homeostasis which is imbalance, and it actually wants to relieve and release all of that energy you've been storing. Mm -hmm. And so it will bring it up through memories, feelings, thoughts, and emotions. Oh my gosh. I think that that's such an important thing to say, note here is that, yeah, those things that come up, because that's one of the things that I hear that I with people is that they're like, I don't want to do that because then it does bring those things up. It doesn't, it doesn't feel good or it does bring up a memory or it does bring up an emotion that I don't like to feel. And so what I'm hearing you say is like even getting curious about those things because your body yes. is trying to tell you something. Yes. Um, this is the work that I do with people. People come to me usually for some specific, you know, issue related to their sex life. Maybe they're dry. Maybe they want to have a vaginal orgasm. Whatever. They want to learn how to squirt, whatever the, whatever the thing is. But because of understanding how it is all centered in your nervous system, it is all about learning. I teach people how to learn and heal from, heal from their trauma, heal from the stress, how to create a container of safety for themselves so they can process these emotions and process these feelings. It's, I think it's integral that people learn how to work with people who have, like, have um, embodiment practices, mindset, all the things that we know we're supposed to do. There's a reason for it. There's biological reasons why those work for, for everyone. And it's important that you find the right people to work with, you know, you, me, <laughs> other other amazing people out there too mm -hmm. to actually help working on healing because when it you heal when you're safe and so it's important that you learn how to do this in a safe way um one of the things i'm very very big on is being trauma informed i don't necessarily like always using that word but it's the word that people know but it's very important that people realize Anytime feelings, thoughts, emotions come up that you can re-traumatize yourself if you're not in a safe setting. And mm -hmm. this is why getting curious with yourself and learning how to create these safe practices within yourself will help speed your healing and your transformation <laughs> very yeah. quickly once you learn how to create that safety. Yeah. So do you, do you recommend that you just do this by yourself or can you do this with a partner? Um, starting first by yourself, because you will always feel safest by yourself and it doesn't mean that your partner's unsafe. So I want to make that very, <laughs> very, yeah. very clear. But as humans, anytime there is another human around, we have this part of our nervous system it's called the social engagement system where we will start in training with the other individual and we will start this reciprocal you know process where we are and in particular females will be interpreting the faces of the individual and in trying to you know 
figure out what they're thinking and feeling in order to res- to uh, adapt our behavior to what's going on with them. So mm-hmm. when you're doing these practices for the first time, I do recommend doing them by yourself first, figuring out what you like and then bringing in your partner. Because when you do it first by yourself, you don't have that extra hurdle of interpreting faces and being mindful of the other person's thoughts and feelings. Yeah. You're not, you're, yeah, you're not trying to do, you know, too many things at once. You're just able to focus fully on yourself, your nervous system, your pleasure, your body. Yeah. All the, the thoughts and feelings, just your thoughts and feelings and body sensations and not multiple (laughs) thoughts and feelings and body sensations that you might have to interact with. That makes right. And then also from the, and the other standpoint that I want to uh, bring up too is most, I'm not saying all, but most, <laughs> most women and females that I know are brought up in a way where they were praised for taking care of others. Mm-hmm. And so most women will, you know, have this learned behavior of taking care of other people before themselves. And so for these practices where you're learning how to come back into your body If you are worried about, and even subconsciously, maybe you're consciously trying to stay present, but subconsciously, because of the way you're wired and your learned behavior, you're going to be trying to take their, their well-being as more important than your own. It's, it's learned behavior. So the way you unlearn that behavior is to be present with yourself and to do this with yourself first. So that way it's, it's almost impossible to learn a new behavior when you're under stress and even though your partner is safe and comforting all of this the activity that you're doing is uncertain therefore it's stressful and therefore it creates this whole cascade of chemical processes that without your learned behavior of practicing it by yourself will make it difficult for you to get into your body if you don't know how to do that already right yeah that makes that makes total sense to me (laughs) Hey, biohacking your nervous system. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, that, work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, that actually makes really clear you know, again. Yeah. All the way back to the beginning of our show here and talking about biohacking your nervous system. It's like, oh, okay. That now makes sense. That clicks in my brain. I'm like, okay, that's what biohacking your nervous system is. Yeah. It's about learning these shortcuts and mm-hmm. making it easy for you to make the changes Mm -hmm. to improve and regulate your nervous system. So that way, when you are under stress, you can respond in the way that maintains a more regulated nervous system. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. We are going to take one last break. And then when we get back, we're going to talk about, okay, so now what, now, what do we do now? Now, what do we do about this? Okay. Excellent. All right. See everybody soon. All right. Welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham show, courageously expanding love. And we are here with Wendy Perkins and we are talking about pleasure, our nervous system and biohacking our way (laughs) to pleasure and on the break. And I'm just going to, I do want to share this um, uh, on the actual show, but on the break, I was just saying like how Wendy, like how well you you say and share things and like I'm sitting here being like oh yeah when I do this or oh yeah like that one time when this happened and oh yeah and like in this relationship and oh my god I should have done this like I'm like seriously (laughs) <laughs> like I'm getting so much out of this episode. So I hope that every person who's listening is also getting a lot out of it as well. Um, but I think I really do think like because our nervous system is, and I talk about this in my work, is like when you get to the source of something, then everything makes sense. It's like when you get all the way down to the source of something, then it like unlocks all the layers on top of it. And our nervous system is that is a source. Like, yeah. Like it's like how much further you can't get further down than that with this stuff. 
And so I think that that's why the work that you do is so important is because it really gets down to the source of what people are dealing with in their bodies and the trauma that they're experiencing and the stress that they're experiencing and the pleasure that they're trying to experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, as I said at the, at the beginning, how it's clear that our bodies are a physical representation of our nervous system. And this is science, this science, it's not just me saying shit. <laughs> this is actually what is happening. Not just a cute thing and to say. Once, <laughs> yeah. Um, so once you understand that, you know, the nervous system is is energy. It's basically a, you know, one sodium electron you know, changing places with another one, right? And it creates this whole entire process, but the, it's an energy system and there's multiple energy systems within our body. And this is, I'm bringing this up specifically because we're talking about bringing more, you know, pleasure in and in biohacking. And mm -hmm. this is, I think, a, an important concept to, for people to understand is that there's like the physical body and then there's the mental, which is more like the nervous system part. And then there's the emotional, which is the fascia, which is where the stress and trauma gets stored. And then there's also this spiritual, I call it spiritual, but it's the biofield. There's, there's research on the biofield. So you could, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's mm -hmm. the biofield. And once you understand how these four energy systems work with each other, that is when, and you start working on each of them, that is when you make these big progress and changes. And the easiest way to do that is actually through pleasure because pain will shut down certain systems. Mm. So if you're thinking things through and talking things through, it's going to shut down your emotional body, mm. right? So if you're thinking of pain, it shuts down the emotions because they're hard to, they're two energy systems. The energy don't like to flow at the same time in the same way. Right. So, but when you go towards pleasure, both the mental energy system and the emotional energy system can flow at the same time and allow energy to flow through the nervous system as well. And all within the biofield. Wow. Isn't that so interesting? That's yeah. so, so it's actually the quickest way. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean That's the quickest way. No, yeah, no, don't, no, no apologies <laughs> necessary. <laughs> Please no apologies necessary. Um, but no, that, that, um, uh, I, and and I love this. I love this as well as um, someone who does this work because you are always trying to find like, what is the most effective way that I can, um, as, as a professional in this field, that I can help my clients, that I can help people who are struggling in this area. And so I think that it's fascinating that, you know, you have found this way where it's just like, yeah, like this is, this is the effective way to do that actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I, as a, as one professional to another professional and to everybody listening, the quickest way to heal is to create safety. That mm -hmm. is how you heal. The mm -hmm. nervous system cannot heal and release the energy if, if you're not safe, if you don't feel safe. So however you, you go about doing that, that's why self-pleasure practices are a really good way to do it because you're doing something that's pleasurable. And, you know, obviously my, my focus is orgasm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I am, th I'm talking specifically sexual pleasure pa practices, but it doesn't have to be sexual pleasure. I just want to mention that. But when you are creating safety and pleasure, it is the quickest way to heal any kind of stress and trauma. Mm. Oh my gosh. And, yeah. Which go is ahead. why some people have these amazing healing experiences when they, you know, do dance because they're in a safe place and they're moving their body and they're having this pleasurable experience of dancing. Mm -hmm. Right. Can't you see? So like uh people who go and do the um pole dancing classes or the boudoir classes and learn how to twerk and they go to these classes with other women that are creating this container of safety for themselves and they're moving their bodies and they're having fun and they're they're being curious and they're playing they're literally moving all of that stored stress and energy through their body also create, creating this container of safety 
to allow the energy to move through their nervous system more freely. Yeah, no, I think that that's, that's really beautiful. And it's also like, <laughs> like the, the feminist, like F you part of me is like, yeah, that's <laughs> why pole dancing classes. Yeah. <laughs> because healing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like who knew you were healing trauma when you went to pole dancing class? <laughs> oh my god I love that so much okay tell us tell us how uh, um we are we are wrapping up the show um yes. uh, and I I want to make sure that you can share um about all of your stuff but the the questions that I want to ask you are what does love mean to you okay um love means being accepting of the other person as they are. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. If people get only one thing out of this episode, what do you hope that they got? That it's safe to be curious about their pleasure. Ooh, yes. And what is one action that people can take? Start having fun touching them <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right how can people find you and what are you promoting right now um i'm wendy at owning your o and i'm instagram owning your o or facebook owning your o and then my website is owning your o.com and right i'm getting ready to launch and very soon a program called quantum sexuality where i teach people the foundations of creating safety within themselves and working with the physical mental emotional spiritual aspects and we wrap up the program with a bit of quantum sex magic because i am an orgasm coach <laughs> yes awesome and all of those links are in the bio as well and i believe that you sent me a um a discount code yeah, so I sent you, I think I sent you the discount code. I'll I, I'll make sure I've got the right one, but there should be two discount codes, one for Yoni dearmoring. So if you're not ready for the quantum sexuality program and you just want to start learning how to heal the trauma from your Yoni, I sent you a discount code for that. So your listeners can get sure. some, get that at a discount. And then I will send a special discount code for the quantum sexuality too. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah. So Yoni Dearmoring and the discount code is ELZ Cunningham, which is my Instagram handle. Um, and I will also put that in the uh, show notes as well. And yeah, Wendy, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you for all of the work that you do. Thank you for the research, time, effort, energy, expertise. I'm just, I'm huge fan. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. It's been yeah. fun. <laughs> and thank you everyone who has been listening or watching. Remember to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, make sure that you tune in every single week. We have amazing people on the show talking about love, sex, pleasure, relationships, taboo topics, kink, things that you wish that you could talk about, but you just don't get a chance to. And so make sure that you tune in every Tuesday live or catch the aired episode afterwards on Thursdays. Until next time, keep loving. You have been listening to The Elizabeth Cunningham Show, courageously expanding love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Tune in live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we shed light on relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. Learn to love yourself and create the relationships you want. Connect with me at ElizabethAnnCunningham.com. That's elizabethannecunningham.com.